And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us on the line. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Monday. How was your weekend? <laughs> it was eventful. I went back to the yeah. theaters the first in a really long time. <laughs> ah, what yes. did you watch? Yes, uh, I watched the, the latest Marvel film with Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, <laughs> What's so did the movie I. called? Doctor Strange. Uh, <laughs> did uh, you forget the title for yes, a second Yes, because there? impossibly <laughs> long, multiverse, something, madness, something, something. That's not very Let's credible. Just call it the latest Doctor Strange <laughs> movie. I mean, yeah, they're all getting so long these titles these days, aren't they? Honestly, I mean, it seems like the summer blockbuster list is going to be really fierce in the South Korean local box office. I mean, we're going to finally get to see Broker, an award-winning film. Now uh, we get to yeah. see the latest from the Park Chan Wook clan. Big news coming from Cannes. <laughs> I know, I know. A lot to look forward to, though. And we can eat popcorn now in the cinema, so even yes. more reason. Yes, apparently that's a big thing. Until we were deprived, we don't really know how good we really had it. And after two years of it, popcorn is welcomed. All right, let's jump into our first uh, keyword news item of the day. This is our first pick of the day. Extra budgets. So the National Assembly approved a 62 trillion won extra budget aimed at supporting businesses hit by pandemic-related restrictions. Uh, It seems that small merchants, freelancers, all applicable for the extra budget. Uh, What's the latest? Yeah, so the amount approved was actually 2.6 trillion won more than the initial uh, 59.4 trillion won that was announced last month. Now, it will be mostly used for cash handouts, as you say, small businesses and the self-employed. Uh, to make up for the losses, of course, incurred by uh, pandemic-related restrictions. Um, In the vote that was held yesterday night, 246 lawmakers approved of the 251 that actually voted. Only one voted Mm. against uh, the bill, interestingly, which is quite rare. I mean, Mm. it's not often that we see this kind of close to unanimous vote uh, on a bill Mm. um, in the National Assembly. Uh, now, the PPP's uh, floor leader, Kwon Song dong said the two parties reached an agreement without any conflict, really, on Sunday after holding a meeting uh, with his counterpart, Park Hong Gun. Um, it is the biggest ever extra budget. It comes just days, of course, ahead of the local elections being held on Wednesday. Maybe that was a factor that uh, uh, of the, no, there being no uh, conflict between mm. the rival parties. Um, it is the first extra budget under the Yoon Song Yong government, and it's also the eighth during the pandemic. And it calls for a 39 trillion won spending plan, uh, including cash handouts to small merchants and 23 trillion won in grants to regional governments as well. Um, under the agreement, some 3.7 million business owners will be eligible for these cash handouts of between 6 million and 10 million won each. Uh, The two parties, though, did have a little bit of conflict before their agreement on Sunday. This was uh, mostly because of these one-time grants for small business owners. Um, Previously, only businesses with annual revenues of 3 billion won or less were Mm -hmm. were to receive these uh, one-time payments of 6 to 10 uh, million won. Mm -hmm. That standard has now been raised to 5 billion won in annual revenues. Mm -hmm. Um, Financial aid to freelancers and artists was also doubled from 1 million to 2 million won. Uh, Aid to company-owned taxi drivers and rental bus drivers has actually tripled Mm -hmm. uh, from 1 million won uh, to 3 million won. Um, There hasn't really been anything on foreign residents in Mm -hmm. Korea. Something that, that I was hoping to see. <laughs> <laughs> do you fall uh, into that sort of, niche category? Yes, I do. Uh, a foreign a freelancer is what I uh, fall into, <laughs> but uh, no word on that. Uh, hopefully something might come. Uh, but anyway, those are the details of the extra budget so far. All right, let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Record voter turnout. Early voting for the local elections took place last Friday and Saturday and saw record voter turnout. Maybe an indication how much lies in these local elections. Run us through the details, Adam. Yeah, so this, of course, local election, we said it before, it's kind of like a litmus test of uh, how the government is doing, what the public is thinking of the new Yoon Sung Yeo government just uh, over a month into office now. Um, And the numbers of people voting have actually increased over the years as well. Mm. Uh, And we're kind of seeing that with this local election or the early voting anyway. Um, Now, the latest figure is 9.1 million people uh, who headed to the polls early. 
Uh, that's over 20% of the eligible voting population. Now, the first day turnout reached uh, just over 10%, which was higher than the uh, near 9% that we saw in the 2018 local elections. Now, the numbers have been on a steady rise since early voting was actually first allowed back in 2014. Now, in terms of the local elections, 17 metropolitan mayor and provincial governor posts are up for grabs, uh, as well as 226 lower level council heads, Mm. as well as provincial and metropolitan councils and lower level local councils as well. Um, The highest turnout rate was in South Chola, with 31 percent of its voters casting ballots. Uh, Kangwon and North Jala provinces followed. The lowest turnout was down in Tegu at nearly 15%. Uh, just over 21% of voters in Seoul, meanwhile, cast their ballots. Um, now, when counting all past elections, including uh, general and presidential, the early voter turnout this time was actually slightly lower than uh, previous early voting. Uh, In the recent presidential election uh, Mm. in March, uh, 36.9% of voters went to the polls early. Uh, In the general election of 2020, just under 27% of voters went early in that election. Uh, That's why watchers believe that the turnout for Wednesday's election day will slightly fall short of the March presidential Mm. election, mostly because a lot of people took advantage of that early voting system. All right, and let's move on to our related third keyword of the day. Campaigning. Uh, I remember what my weekend was filled with. The streets were a little bit noisier than usual because it's the last minute push to get people to vote for, well, the respective candidates. The leaders of rival parties are busy taking the streets as well to endorse their respective candidates ahead of the local elections. Yeah, certainly was uh, quite loud uh, driving by. You hear, you hear these loudspeakers yeah. uh, going past your car. It does take you a bit by surprise. I remember jumping in my car because I <laughs> heard a lot of shouting through the microphone and loudspeakers. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, for those uh, uh, staying at home, you'll probably be hearing them today uh, and tomorrow as well mm. because uh, the campaigning will be taking place Uh, just ahead of that Wednesday election. Uh, And speaking of campaigning, the People Power Party chief, Lee Jun-suk, he'll be in Daejeon uh, to campaign in the morning. Um, He'll be then travelling to Sejong and Gyeonggi province to jointly campaign for those candidates as well, as well as other regions in the country. Uh, The GP's leadership is scheduled to hold a press conference in Incheon, uh, mainly to endorse Lee Jae-myung, who's running in the city. Uh, other senior officials of that party will be travelling to Kangwon and Busan to throw their support for the candidates running in those respective areas. Um, Kimpo International Airport is becoming kind of a heated issue in the local elections, especially because Lee Jae-myung pledged to relocate uh, the airport in order to lift development restrictions for the mm-hmm. region west of Seoul. Right. Uh, he vowed to close Kimpo Airport. So relocate is kind of a... Um, not quite the accurate word, it's kind of spreading the airport out yeah. into other airports is what uh, Lee Jae-myung is trying to do, mm-hmm. and basically moving its operation to other airports, as mm-hmm. it currently affects, according to him, the height restrictions on buildings mm-hmm. uh, in the Incheon area and other regions bordering the airport as well. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, the PPP is strongly opposed to that plan, uh, but the candidates themselves, meanwhile, uh, they'll be busy, of course, trying to woo voters as well today. Uh, the race for the Kyungi governor post is being closely watched. That's one of the one of the hot battles that uh, a lot of people are taking interest in. It's especially because it's a, a tight race between Kim Ae of the PPP mm. as well as DP's Kim Dong Yun. Mm. Um, the two candidates will also be campaigning hard in the region. Uh, so look out for those loudspeakers. Uh, <laughs> now, according to uh, recent public opinion polls, the PPP is ahead of the main opposition DP. It remains uncertain, though, whether that trend will be continued until Wednesday. Mm. Um, Another hotly contested battleground is the Seoul mayor position. Seoul mayor also is actually ahead of the DP candidate Song Young-gil with a double-digit margin. So it looks pretty likely that also uh, has a a firm grasp on Mm. the Seoul mayoral post. But of course, don't rule anything out. Mm. Uh, Now, the highest support ratings for PPP candidates came from the most conservative-friendly regions in the country, namely Daegu uh, and North uh, Gyeongsang province. Um, Observers say the outcomes of local elections are especially hard to forecast based on public opinion ratings. That's because samplings for uh, respondents vary greatly depending uh, on the surveyors Mm. um, and the survey results often 
don't match poll <laughs> results. So, of course, <laughs> if there are any uh, results or public opinion polls that have taken place, the results of which you should always take with a huge grain of salt mm. because uh, um, all these uh, samplers and these uh, polling mm. uh, organizations, they have a little bit of sway to them. So, mm. yes, we don't know anything until we see the results of the actual election. All right. I guess the most important takeaway is to exercise your democratic and civic duty, perhaps, and go vote if you're eligible. Yeah. You're a foreigner resident, which means you can't vote, right? <laughs> Uh, I can't. No, I, I don't have voting rights. So, I just put uh, yeah. those pieces wa- together for the first time, Adam. <laughs> I'll be quite. I'll be watching closely, of course. Though it is an interesting battle ahead. Certainly, indeed. Let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Delivery worker insurance. So delivery workers of the country's top uh, delivery apps are now eligible for industrial accidents insurance. It did have a sense of exclusivity before. So what does this change all mean? Yeah, so lawmakers, they did pass uh, revisions to the laws on occupational health insurance as well as employment insurance uh, yesterday. Uh, Now, the key, as you mentioned in the headlines, was to give these workers Uh, basically a regular employment status that would basically enable them to be eligible for such insurance. They'll be part of the company, a worker for the company. Mm. Uh, They were previously under a kind of a category known as special employment, as it's roughly translated, which kind of made it, uh, gave them kind of a hurdle in trying to get this insurance Mm. or this protection, uh, essentially, uh, in place. Now, the revision will take effect from July next year, so there's still a ways to go. Mm. Um, Now, the revised law uh, does give some protection, especially to these workers in what is a notoriously dangerous occupation. I know a few people who have, uh, uh, close to me, have lost their lives who have done certain uh, of this type of job as Mm. well. Um, So it is very timely that this such protection and revision to the law has come. Um, But of course, the consumers uh, may face a bit of higher cost because of the payment for these uh, insurance Mm. um, schemes that the companies have to uh, impose as well. Mm. So there are concerns over that. But uh, delivery costs Mm. for these delivery apps, they have gone up Mm. pretty much already as well. It's uh, a cost of one menu item to get (laughs) something delivered to your door. This is true, Adam. But I do feel like there was a consensus at a time where we're getting a lot of headlines on timely accidents of delivery workers. And it seemed to be that the public was on the side of delivery workers as long as it was transparently being used for the betterment of the workforce, right? I mean, if the company was taking a bigger pie, that would be a different set of questions. Exactly, yeah. All right, let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Trilateral uh, trilateral (laughs) meeting, excuse me. The top diplomats of South Korea, the United States and Japan have pledged efforts to end North Korea's destabilizing activities and bring the country back, hopefully, to the dialogue table. So can you run us through what was said? Sure. Uh, Pak Jin, Anthony Blinken and Yoshimasa Hayashi, they strongly condemned the North's recent ballistic missile launches, of which there were many. Uh, They also vowed to strengthen trilateral cooperation towards the complete uh, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, Uh, They also vowed to fully implement UNSC resolutions and underscore continued openness to meeting with the regime without preconditions. Uh, They also expressed deep regret over the failed attempt to uh, to again pass a new UNSC resolution on North Korea. That's basically because China and Russia are usually opposed to them. They're both veto power wielding members. Uh, The diplomats also urged North Korea again to work with the international community uh, to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the nation. Uh, The North Koreans seem to be still rejecting outside help, uh, bar uh, that from China, reportedly. Um, North Korea are staging 17 missile tests so far this year. Six of them, apparently, according to the US, are ICBMs. Um, Meanwhile, defense ministers as well of the three countries, they've reportedly been arranging trilateral talks on the sidelines of the Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore. uh, That's set for June 10th to 12th. That's according to a Japanese news outlet. North Korea, of course, will top the agenda if those talks take place. And if they do, they'll be the first such in-person gathering since November 2019. Mm. All right. Well, thank you so much for the run through this morning, Adam. Have a safe day and we'll see you again tomorrow. You too. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.